I think uh, so, so something I, I've noticed, so I've been, I like to create things, so either mm -hmm. projects or websites or coding stuff or writing or videos and things like that. And something I've realized is that uh, there's, an, there's an important aspect of starting very localized mm -hmm. because you kind of count in, counter intuitively, that could be the way how you actually get more successful or, or mm -hmm. bigger, whatever you want to say. Uh, you know, like you mentioned, you know, Facebook, you know, like what started as a yearbook or as a way to write people ended up becoming that big thing. But uh, like it, it's 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 not it's not uh, obvious that if Facebook wanted to start as a, you know, the way how people start communicating, communicating with each other, I don't think he would have actually uh, gotten to that point uh, of actually becoming the big thing. But I think that, that we were talking to an statistics professor mm -hmm. about climate change and stuff like that. And, and the big thing that she said was, you know, climate change is a global problem, but a local solution, mm -hmm. which goes back to what you were saying, that if you were to create a social media, it would be, it'd be hyper localized and perhaps a way how you can change that is that you know people like that that is the, the local aspect mm -hmm. and then perhaps people can just have their own you know in the same website but each person has their own, you know because you live here you would have only the urbana champagne but because someone who lives in boston would have only the boston one and that's how perhaps the business model mm -hmm. would work but i also think it's important to have lots of different local communities not just one right um, and this is something that, um, you know, I don't know if it's because we, we reward scale that we seem to be focusing on that. Um, I mean, definitely from a monetary perspective, you know, the more users you have, um, you know, the more money you make. Um, but if you look at like our power grid, a lot of that is more localized. Um, but communities can help each other. Like if one community is low on power, there's a power outage, you, you can, there's ways to communicate, whether it be for sharing or for, for other reasons. Um, but having like one big centralized model, um, you know, has pros and cons. Um, Mastodon is very decentralized compared to some of the systems we have today. And that has pros and cons too. Um, it's, um, you know, it's taken off more because of some recent events. Um, but it's it's hard to see how it um, you know it doesn't have the advertising backing that some of the other sites have as well, and it also relies on a lot a lot of volunteers. Um, you know, Wikipedia is a different, um, and the, the history of Wikipedia is fascinating too. Um, you know, the earlier versions of it had so many levels of editing mm -hmm. um, to the point where I think in the first year. Um, they had less content than they had in like the current version of Wikipedia that they had in two months. Um, I would have to go back and look at the actual numbers, but they slowly started removing the levels of checking that you had. And once they did that, you know, it exploded. Um, and you see that in a lot of social media spaces, for example, like YouTube was first about, let's get as many people on here as we can, and then worry about some of the things that maybe we should be worried about. Hmm. Um, and so people, people prioritize, you know, getting um, a critical mass of people on the space and then worry about some of the other things. Um, and that, that's that been a common pattern that we've seen in Silicon Valley and elsewhere um, in designing tools. And now we're at that point where, you know, we've had regulation in place that, you know, where the, the platform wasn't responsible, for example, for content on the site. But now we've hit this this critical point where we st we have to start thinking about what to do about some of the content that's on these sites. Hmm. Um, and they're not easy problems. Um, you mentioned, um, you know, polarization earlier. Um, and you also mentioned, um, you know, some forms of um, possible misinformation happening in these spaces. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, misinformation happened before but it's happening now at a speed and scale that is unprecedented. Right. Um, and a lot of it is happening because it's in some of these localized groups. Um, there's this wonderful researcher at UW, her name is Kate Starbird. Um, she and others have done work um, showing how, how um, some of these platforms changed some of the policies around retweeting, like helped um, curtail some of this misinformation. Um, for example, um, 
depending on, on certain content, you couldn't retweet it, but mm -hmm. you could quote retweet it. Um, and a lot of these, you know, different policies affect the reach and the speed that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some controls that people can make, um, but it's, it's, it's hard, right? It's hard and it's hard to do it objectively. Um, and you're going to make mistakes and maybe, you know, people should own up to the mistakes and learn from them and, and fix it the next time. But, you know, we shouldn't try to stop fixing these, um, stop fixing some of these problems. Um, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a growing space. Some people actually want to treat social media as a utility the way they treat the power companies. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's regulation in place for that. Um, Interesting. Yeah, regulation, I mean, isn't a magic bullet either, though, right? Um, finding the right regulation is, is key. Um, and there's so many obstacles to getting some regulations in place. Um, but we have to know what, what, what levers we can start experimenting with. Um, and, and seeing real work. And we need evidence-based practice, right? Like we need concrete, um, studies that show, 